What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and today we're going to be fixing some CVT belt issues. Okay, so I reached out to Go Power Sports and told them that I was having a belt issue on one of my go-karts. I have a Chinese knockoff of a Comet. It's around a $75 torque converter, and I believe the springs aren't right in it. So Go Power Sports was nice enough to send us over some springs and a new belt for it. So we're going to be pulling the torque converter off of the daddy-daughter go-kart, and we're going to swap out the springs, do some cleaning on it, and put it back on. Let's see if it fixes the problem. So let's uh, jump down on the go-kart and pull this thing off. Okay, so what we're going to be doing first is pulling the 10 millimeter off of the front pulley. Okay, now we can pull the outside of that pulley off and set all that this stuff aside. Now we can just pull the front of the belt and slip it off the rear. And that is a new belt, by the way. Okay, next we're going to be pulling off the 24 millimeter nut on the rear pulley. And get that off. Now we can pull this rear pulley set up off. So now let's jump on the workbench and get all this cleaned up. First off, we're going to be pulling this circlip off of the top. Now you're going to want to keep a little tension push down right here because the spring is pushing up against this. One way you can tell uh, how weak your springs is, you can twist that. And that's pretty easy to twist, so let's hope this uh, new spring will will stiffen that up some and fix our problem. So I'm going to grab my circ clip pliers and pop this clip off. Okay, so we got that clip out. Now, like I said, this is under some spring tension, so we're just going to pull it up and just be careful. There we go. There's that spring. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and clean all of this as well while we got it pulled apart. You can see there's a bunch of old dirt in there and stuff. And uh, make sure everything is in good, good working order. Okay, so when we pull this off, you'll notice there's a little sleeve inside of there. Make sure there's no, uh, you know, grease and grime on it. I've already cleaned this one. And then you can slide it back down and uh, slide the outside of this, uh, this torque converter pulley back on. Now, like I said, the red spring's what came in it, and you can see the size difference of the two. So let's hope this green one does really make the difference. Okay, so now we're ready to assemble this. This is a real quick job, by the way. You'll notice on this spring, it has two ears, one on each side. Now there's a hole down here in the base of this pulley that one of the ears will pop right down into. And then you'll notice on the cap, there's three holes. The center hole is normally the stock configuration. So we're gonna go ahead and pop that in that center hole now you'll notice my flat spots on my shaft is at nine and three o'clock and the flat spots on the top cap is at 12 and six o'clock we're going to want to preload the spring by twisting counterclockwise when we get it down at the shaft so we push down and then we can twist it holding the top bell from spinning and if you notice our little ears are actually in front of these little pucks. We want it behind it. And then you can slide it on down. And get that sir clip all set in place. Now we have our new springs installed. And there's quite a bit more tension on that thing now. So now we're done with this part. We can move on to the front pulley. Okay, we've got the front pulley setting up on the workbench. We're going to go ahead and disassemble it. Now, um, this piece was actually stuck down in this head, which is okay, but you can tell this thing needs wiped out quite a bit. And uh, also, you want this uh, center piece to just fall right through the pulley, which mine does perfectly fine. So that means there's nowhere's catching. Um, but we're going to go ahead and wipe it down while we have it out. Make sure we get all that grime out of the little, the corners. Now I'm using a plastic bristle brush so I don't, uh, you know, eat up anything on this to really get down in those cracks. 
Okay, so that's all clean now. And go ahead and wipe out the center of this as well just to make sure it's all clean. You see there's a lot of grime falling out of that thing on the workbench there. I'm going to also take that brush down through there. Okay, I went ahead and pulled that out. I forgot um, that was one step as well. So now we can go ahead and roll these springs right off. I like to get a little um, a little poker driver up under it and then you can roll those right out. Okay, we've got our new pack of springs. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start putting this spring on. I'm going to start with uh, putting the bottom on and the two open ends up at the top and just pretty much roll them onto each other. like so and we don't want to put the open end on the same side so we're going to put the other end where it clips together on the opposite side there we go and you can give it a pull yeah I can barely pull that apart okay since we got all these pieces cleaned back up I'm going to put just a little bit on the outside bell of the front pulley um, right in the center of it of this dry graphite lubrication let that set up for a minute so we got some of that dry graphite lubrication in the center and we can just slide this all back together making sure that our piece falls through the center of that now we can go reassemble this on the go-kart and put our new go power sports belt on and see if it makes a difference okay now we're just going to slide this rear pulley back on and then put our washer and nut right back on there I'm going to lightly hit this with the impact I don't want to beat it to death because there's a circ clip on the rear that can get damaged so should be good now we can slide our new belt on Putting it on the rear pulley first and then setting it on the front. Now we can put this gear on with the flat spots pointing outward. Now we can slide that new pulley on and then put the outside bell on making sure those flat spots get seated. And now we can tighten up the 10 millimeter. Should be good enough. Like I said, you don't want to hammer down on it. Now let's take this thing for a test, rip snot.
Thank you. Yeah, I was about to say, you might want to step back for a minute. Uh, you know what I'm doing. I don't give a damn. Huh? I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know. Okay, so I'm sure you noticed the woman pretty much cussing me out at the end of the GoPro footage. Now that's why I kind of highlighted when I was going through her backyard, remember this. Um, basically, about 10 or 12 times over the last like five months, I don't do it often, I would cut through the woman's backyard, going slow as you can see in the video, not spinning or anything and not trying to upset anybody. And we've always been on good terms, so I thought that was completely okay for me to do, which I know it's her property, I should have asked to drive through her property, but like I said, I've never had a problem out of the woman I've helped her carry in a treadmill pretty much by myself I've always went up there during the winter time when it snows or, or ices and ask her if she needs anything from town I, I thought I was a good neighbor now she approaches me and immediately starts cussing me telling me not to drive through her her yard and uh, you know using a few choice words and I try I don't know if anybody's noticed but I try not to cuss whatsoever I don't think I've ever cussed on my YouTube videos because um, I want kids to watch this and I don't want them to copy what I say so I'm not going to cuss. Well the woman starts cussing me and I don't know why I turned the GoPro off. I should have left it rolling. I just wasn't thinking and out of the courtesy for the woman uh, I turned it off but the woman proceeds to cuss me and tell me she puts up with my noise and my crap and she points at all my go-karts kind of sitting beside and behind my garage. Well, at this point, I'm starting to get a little heated because I don't, uh, I don't like how she's talking to me. I would never approach her if I had a problem cussing her out. And um, she goes to tell me what I'm doing is illegal. That's when I kind of get mad and I say, uh, this is after the video is cut off. I say, this is my property and I'll do whatever I want and using a few choice words myself because at this point I've had enough of her talking to me like this and uh, I tell her about my go-kart sitting around you know that's just how it's gonna have to be if she don't like seeing it don't look down at my place because I have go-karts and four-wheelers parked behind my garage and some beside and I have a few little things out in front of my garage but I'm a busy guy I work on a lot of stuff and I don't have storage for all this stuff so it's gonna have to sit where it sits now the woman when she said a uh, uh, what I was doing was illegal. I thought she was talking about me riding my go-karts on my property. I own this house and I'm out of the city limits. I have no restrictions. I can do whatever I want on my property. Now mind you, I've never made any noise at night. I've never rode these go-karts at night other than the light bar video that I put up a few weeks ago. But I didn't bother no one at that point because it was only like 8 o'clock. Now the woman says, no, you've been riding these things on the highway and that's illegal. Like she was almost going to call the cops on me and I said ma'am I've never rode these in the highway uh, the only time we've actually been out into the lanes of the highway is if we're crossing over but we can clearly see a mile forward and backwards on the road and uh, on the last video where we put the performance parts on Little Red Lonnie turns around in the lanes of the road but he can clearly see both ways making sure he's not interfering with any traffic now when we ride on the road you can see we ride in the grass or in the shoulder I've even passed cops 
stopped several times riding these go-karts. I'm sure if I was a little kid, there would be a problem, but since I'm a grown man riding these things, they know I know the law, and they leave me alone. They never said anything. I've actually, in fact, talked to a few cops, and they say it's completely fine for what I'm doing. Now, the woman said, uh, obviously she didn't believe me. She thought I was riding in the road, and I asked her, why would I be riding my go-karts in the lanes? You know, that makes no sense. But she goes on to, to griping about my yard. She says, you know you're killing your yard because we pretty much got a permanent dirt track around my yard. And I said, ma'am, the water from your property is what's killing my yard. I gave up on my yard over a year ago because uh, we're kind of in a middle section where we're at. There's a house below us and then hers is above us. The water coming off her property actually washes 50% of my gravel out in my yard. And I have like foot deep ruts in my yard from the water off her property. So I pretty much quit giving a hoot about my yard a long time ago so you know I quickly told her that and that's when she kind of mellowed out seeing that you know her property was causing my property problems and then I proceeded to tell her you know we're putting this house up for sale in the spring so we'll be out of your hair soon but in the meantime she's gonna have to deal with some noise during the day I mean I like to ride go-karts I like for my kids to have fun we have dirt bikes we have four-wheelers and this is America after all. We can do whatever we want on our property. I've always tried to be polite to them, but the woman completely came off, you know, out of line and rude to me, which I would have never done to her. So um, I hope I hope we don't have any more problems out here. I feel like we could, but maybe everything's fine now that we won't be driving through her yard. Again, guys, make sure you ask permission before you go through people's property or you get an old woman jumping down your throat. Don't forget, all the items are in the description below, as well as a discount code that'll save you 10% on your purchase on GoPowerSports.com. It doesn't work on engines and a few other items, but for the most part, you can get 10% off pretty much anything on their website. Now guys, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. The links will be in the description below. And always like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. Help us grow. We're going to be doing some giveaways and some big things, guys, so... Always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.